Hey guys, this is Mandy and welcome to Resume Live where I actually go through a resume that I'm looking at for the very first time and edit it in real time and provide the voiceover and everything that you need to know to learn from the best practices of what I'm doing. Now, the fun part is, is that this is a real resume. <laughs> this is from a dear friend that I went to college with. Um, I haven't seen him in a while and I actually miss him, but I have never worked with him professionally. So it's kind of nice because I have a very objective point of view of what his resume is saying to me, um, both obviously objectively, but also between the lines, which I think a lot of people can read as well. So that's what we're here to do today. All right. Um, for the sake of anonymity, I have renamed him as Christian Gray. <laughs> Super dorky, I know. But the thing is, is just a side story for 30 seconds. My husband and I have been really into that show, The Fall. It's like a BBC drama. It's on Netflix. It stars Gillian Anderson from X-Files and Jamie Dornan from Fifty Shades of Grey. But this was actually before he was in Fifty Shades of Grey. And I always thought that he was like such a doofus in those movies. Like I remember going to see it in the theater and being like, I don't get it. Like I don't think he's attractive. I don't, I don't, I just don't see it, you know? And then you watch The Fall and you're like, oh, okay. So even though you're playing serial killer, like I strangely have a lot of empathy and, you know, understanding of you and I think that's like the brilliance of the filmmaking but anyway now that we finished that show I'm like huh maybe I need to go back and watch those terrible 50 shades movies and see if I was missing something um so yeah just for fun I call this guy Christian Gray obviously that's not his real name okay so let's dive right in okay so let's look at the header here um he has as his address Seacove Lane Riverhead New York now if you google that that is some uh I think that's in the Hamptons or Montauk or something, um, but I know he doesn't live there. And also I think it's a little bit uh, confusing um, because you see that he works in New York, but then you're like, does, but does he live in Riverhead? Like that doesn't really quite make sense. So I think a nice way um, to simplify it and what I've been doing a lot lately is I literally just say the city. I mean, you can just say like New York, New York. Okay, you don't have to write out your full address. Gone are the days where people are like mailing you anything, right? So what I usually do is I just put it on one line. And usually I move, it'll be like email, phone number. Okay. I'm going to remove the link. Okay. So also there's a lot of stuff going on here in terms of, it looks like he's using small caps. Um, so what I like to do is I just, before I even get into it, and this is like, honestly, the first time I'm looking at this resume, I like to just clean up the font and have it in a font that I can work with. And then at the very end, what I do, it's like just sentence case. Like, what is this weirdness? Um, at the very end, what I do is I fix all of the I fix all of the formatting. Okay, so and I don't really like this small caps situation. Oh, I think I messed up. Okay, sorry. All right, so I'll just manually change it, and you'll find too. Okay, so I'm gonna just make everything ten for the sake of cleanliness and you'll find too is I like to just have everything look consistent and then at the end you can add all of your fancy formatting and make it really beautiful but first off you just need everything to be consistent okay so let's take a high level look so he went to law school at NYU um, super smart he went to Brown um, overachiever <laughs> just kidding um, okay so it looks like he has been a litigation associate since 2009, so for eight years. Uh, and he was an associate at White and Case for a year. He summered there in between, yes, he summered there between his second and third year. And he also, 
summary of the U.S. House of Representatives and the U.S. Court of International Trade, judicial intern, okay. Member, of blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this is something you'll see a lot when you're dealing with people who have master's degrees or advanced degrees. So when they were in law school or business school or whatever school, um, they were told to put their education up top as the very first thing, which makes sense. Like, let's say you're in, you know, you're studying at Wharton to get your MBA, or you're studying at Columbia to get your law degree. That should be the first thing that someone sees if you're applying for a clerkship or if you're applying for an MBA internship at, say, Goldman or wherever. But what happens is, as time goes on, and as, you know, he graduated 10 years ago from law school, so as time goes on, it no longer makes sense to just have that be the very first thing. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to move this back to the end. And usually that's just a symptom of um, he just probably hasn't updated his resume in forever because he hasn't had to because he's had the same job for a very long time, which makes perfect sense. But for this purpose, we're going to move it below. Okay. So now he's worked at this Becker, Glenn, Muffley, Chesson, and Hosinki LLP as a litigation associate. Now, the first thing that's making me absolutely bananas is that everything here is a very, very long paragraph. Okay, so we're going to start by doing just some basic formatting. And I'm going to make this into bullet points because nobody is going to be reading, I promise you, even lawyers are not going to be reading long sentences, okay? So we're gonna bullet that out. And then also, I see here, um, it's like he just really wanted this to be like super to the side. <laughs> I think this is like he's trying to, uh, he's trying to, This is a symptom of like he's trying to fit everything onto one line. I get it, but you don't have to do it that way. Okay. Okay, so New York, New York litigation associates. So the first thing is I'm gonna just undo all of this weird bolding. And then where it says Becker, Glenn, Muffley, Ch Chasson, and Hosinki, Ho Hosinski, LLP, just becomes that. We're gonna do New York, New York. Oh, this formatting making me crazy. Why would it be like this? litigation associate okay and I believe in m dashes not little simple dashes okay so let's see what is going on with these bullet points now okay that's better and okay so I'm going to go through and do the same thing for this white and case experience here. He was an associate and then a summer associate. This can actually all be one line. It does not have to be broken out like that. People can visually understand. And also, I just don't believe in random italics. Okay, for this one, all right, so let's, let's go through and bullet these out as well. Yep, again, it's like one long paragraph of insanity. Okay, now we're going to go here and see how he has Office of Legislative Counsel and then comma U.S. House of Representatives. I'm going to switch that order. I mean, the small caps people, like, has to end. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> Figured out a way to get rid of it. Okay. And somehow that turned into... Okay. It's actually going to probably just be 9.5 in the end. So we can fix that. Okay. So U.S. Oh my God. The small caps like snuck back in. Like came back in. It was like, I'm not gone. Okay. This house of representatives... Office of Legislative Council. Washington, D.C. Clerk. July. So we clerked for a year. What was this? Oh, for a summer. Okay, I see. Uh, can we just say summer 2006? Great, congratulations. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same thing here. U.S. Court of International Trade. The Honorable Nicholas Tukalas. It'd be so cool if I was like the Honorable Mandy Tang. Okay, fall, this should be fall 2005. Okay, so we drafted opinions. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Federal assistance to software developers. Very exciting. Okay, so it's starting to come together. Education. Yeah, just please don't underline anything arbitrarily. Okay. So, New York. New York, this is just going to be New York, Providence, Rhode Island, AB with honors in English literature, May 2004, honors. How is he the number four ranked college debater in America? That is shitballs. Okay. All right. Okay, New York. Law. Brown University. It's like, do we care that it was fall 2006 now? Okay. Um. I think instead of this weird like honors thing, I'm just gonna be consistent and do it as bullets. And then, I mean, that is pretty awesome that he got all those awards. Okay, let's have this be. Consistent here. You can see I'm deleting periods because I don't believe in periods after bullet points. Okay. Durr. Oh, it was 9.5, wasn't it? So here's where you can start to bold things and start to see. Now, I can already see that he's going to have more space for things. And obviously, if I was working with him for real, what I would do is I would email him and be like, hey, I need more bullet points for this project or that project. But I'm pretending as if it's like, oh, you need to have this resume done in 10 minutes. <laughs> so what would I do? Here's what I would really do. I would start to actually line break these things. I think that's primitives. And then actually, so DC can go up here. 
And, oh, I see. Okay, I know what I'm going to do. Okay, so basically, office. Okay, so that should not be all caps locking crazy. Clerk, let's see, summer 2006. Okay, boom. I think you delete that. Okay, so then this is going to be the Honorable Nicholas Tukalis, Judicial Intern. Fault. Okay, so this stuff doesn't even have to be bolded because it's set apart that way. Okay, so clearly your Judicial Intern, Clerk, which I don't think it's called an intern. I think it's just called a clerk. Okay. All right. I'm trying to just see more consistency. A, B with honors in English literature. Honors. See, I'm like, how did he get honors? Like, I, this is like, like my best friend in college got magna cum laude or something. I'm like, how did you do that? Maybe I took too many classes past fail. <laughs> so I did not qualify or something. I'm not sure. Okay. So now at this point, it's looking more consistent. And now what I'm going to do is take the fine tooth comb approach and really go through these bullets one by one. Okay. So conduct, we're going to start here. Conduct depositions, perform oral arguments, interview, negotiate. I'm going to, what I prefer is to have one line bullets, shorter ones, and more of them. So and negotiate settlements. Okay, so advise, I'm going to like have, like obviously you advise clients. Uh, perform legal research. Okay, so I'm going to combine this. Advise clients on a range of legal matters, comma. Perform research, draft briefs, memoranda, and other legal And documents. Matters have included contract disputes, employment disputes, estate litigation, and products liability. Well, it can be present tense. Um, contract disputes, employment disputes, estate litigation, and products liability matters. Okay, let's see what we can do with this in state and federal and see if we can move that later. Part of a trial team that one will get great, managed, operate, part of trial team, litigation, managed operations of major cross-border transactions on several. Products liability matters in state and federal courts. Part of a trial team that won a multi million dollar jury verdict. Managed operations. Okay, so here what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how I just combine those two. So I'm going to allow one two point bullet point. Managed operations. In Maybe we can manage commercial litigations for several, for non-U.S. clients. Supervising review of hundreds of thousands of documents. That sounds kind of boring. <laughs> Okay, so brought several clients to the firm. Ugh, I really need more detail there, but for the purpose of this, let's move on. And then I'm gonna actually move this to bottom one to the bottom. Let's see, where does he talk about clients? Advise clients on, on if I, okay, documents. Okay. All right. 
white and case. Cross-border leases. All right, here we go. Worked in litigation and project finance departments on cross-border leases in energy. Worked in litigation and, okay, you just worked in lit litigation and project finance on cross-border leases in energy and infrastructure. Don't need industries. Perform legal research. Blah, blah, blah. Yes, great. Prepared and performed due diligence. I'm just going to go back to this because it's kind of making me crazy that it's not consistent. Okay. Brought several clients to the firm. Brought several clients. I mean, what I'm gonna need here is like resulting in some kind of like revenue thing. Let's see, in um, increase of, you know, and what I would do is I would just highlight this and send it back to them and be like, okay, this is what, you know, I need. Okay, prepared and performed. in court and administer in here. Okay, obviously it's in support of them. Concerning domestic policies, okay. Drafted opinions and performed research on matters of international trade. Drafted opinion concerning the legal classification of imported pharmaceuticals. Legal classify and federal. No, those have to be two. Drafted opinions concerning the federal assistance, concerning federal assistance to software developers. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so what I would say here is I want to know a little bit more. So part of a trial team that won a multi-million dollar jury verdict in what industry or cause? Like I basically want a little bit more context. I don't want to do too many comments, but sometimes you need a little bit more information. Um, okay, JD top team, top speaker, third place, faculty of law, Copenhagen. Okay, yeah, we know it's in Copenhagen, okay. I think I wanna, because we have space, what years? Professional activities, education. Okay. All right, so I want a little bit more detail here.
Okay, so sometimes when you're at this point, what I like to do is just do a little bit of formatting to see what is gonna look good. And then at the end, you can go back and add a little bit more comments and fill it out. But pretty much when you're about, <laughs> let's do it in Chinese. Uh, pretty much when you're, I don't love this. When you're about 80% done is when you can like start to choose your fonts. And then from there, you can really be specific about the words that you're choosing. Okay. So he's a lawyer. I want something that's professional, obviously. Like we're not going to do like wing dings <laughs> just for fun. Can you imagine? It's like 1980s. Like, <laughs> okay. All right. Um, like, what, what? like a, like a Victorian style. Just kidding. All right. Let's see. Berkeley might be nice. No, that's too weird. Okay. I typically, for someone who's a real professional level, master's degree, 10 years out of your master's degree, I want something super professional. So let's see. Oh, just so you see. This is a font that I use sometimes for um, people who are in fashion or entertainment. So obviously that looks like crazy with his like white in case, like white shoe offer. Um, let's see. Chivo, sort of like a modern font. This is a Google font. Oh, it's too feminine. But this is the fun of it, is you get to really try things on. Okay, so I'm going to go with... <laughs> Fuck it. Futura it is. <laughs> Just kidding. For Futura is like the Harper's Bazaar font. It's like... The the most typical fashion annoying font in the world. Okay, let's do. All right, let's actually maybe a Gotham. No, it's too modern. I mean, you really have to think about your audience here. What would he be using a resume for? He'd be using it for a legal audience or something professional. So we're going to just go with a traditional Garamond and let that be. And... 9.5 is a little bit too small. So we could do a 10, maybe even 10.5. Yes. Okay, this is looking good. Okay, so you can make the name a little bit bigger. So I think what is what I want to know more of at his experience as a litigation associate is he really needs to quantify more. And like I understand it's law, so it's not going to be like, oh, I closed this $20 million deal. However, there are still numbers associated with the clients that you work with, the you know litigations that you do, things like that. So... Some of the questions would be, okay, here, here are some of the questions. I would be like, um, you know, can you give an example of a recent case where you won, you know, XX amount for your client? You know, or even something like, well, what was on the line, right? And so, like, what was being was being litigated and then what was the result and i know sometimes there's confidentiality so you can't you know even say the name of your client and that's fine but you can still quantify you can still say you know successfully litigated a 10 million dollar whatever deal right you can still quantify it that way and even here under white in case like i'd want to say like can we quantify this portion a bit more as well Prepared and performed due diligence for what? What size of deals? Like who are the clients? Obviously it's 
project finance and you're doing cross-border leases, so what was the value of those leases? You know, you could say, was it, it was a $5 million lease, you know, whatever it's called, like lease back or whatever these things are, right? But you can, you can quantify that. So I really want to see more of that. Um, another thing that's sort of bothering me here is like, obviously we see like drafted opinions three times and it looks a little bit amateurish. I know, I mean, I did that, so I'm not saying he's amateurish. I'm saying my initial editing of this is amateurish. So what would I do? Okay. So drafted opinions concerning the legal classifications of imported pharmaceuticals. Um, It might just be this imported far. Let's try this pharmaceuticals and federal assistance to software developers. Let's see if that developers. Okay. It might even just be that. Looks a little bit better. No, I don't like it. See, this is kind of the thing too, is you just have to try stuff. Like, I don't have all the answers, but it's about like playing with it, right? Like, okay, so drafted opinions in, on matters of international trade. Okay, so that's a commercial thing. And then you have a medical pharmaceutical thing, and then you have like technology. So you want to have these, these three things here. I think it makes sense. And he did it for an entire fall, so he did it for like six months, so yes, okay. So drafted opinions. It might even just be about changing this word, like drafted opinions regarding federal assistance. Or I've, I've also seen like in connection with, I think that's too wordy for this. Tulane moot court competition champion, top team and top speaker. Jessup International Law moot court competition award, third place. Third place, come on. <laughs> Study abroad, University of Copenhagen, Faculty of Law. Ratcliffe Hicks Prize for Public Speaking. Um, all right, so we're starting to run out of a little space here. That's fine. Okay. So let's take a look at it zoomed out. What I also like to do is I like to print it out. I like to print it out and actually look at it and see exactly what is going on. Let's see. And one other thing here is I would just call this activities and <laughs> I know he has like so many other cool things that he does. For some reason, he's like not putting on his resume. So let's see. I'm going to change this to 10 so we have room for this. So um, what other extra curriculars? I think he does like stand up comedy or something. And I think he also had a podcast at some point. So like. Something personal here. I mean, I, I would advise to have, you know, you need to also give some personality, even though this is a legal resume. Otherwise, it is just so dry. Okay, and I'm also just, also what I do is I do a check of the timeline to be like, okay, are we missing anything? Are there any gaps that need to be addressed? Okay, so let's take a look. So we graduated in May 2004. And he graduated from law school, which takes three years in 2007. So he went straight from Brown to law school. Okay. So in 2005, he was in law school. So 2005, he was a judicial intern for the U.S. Court of International Trade. And then 2006, he was an intern or clerk, U.S. House of Representatives. And then he was a summer associate. Okay. So it looks like there was a gap year, 2007. So what did he do between 2007 and 2008? So 
that may have been a financial crisis. So that may have been there was just a gap and he had to wait before starting a whitened case. That might make sense. And then 2009 to present. Okay, so the other thing that I'd be looking for is, okay, so he's been a litigation associate since 2009. And so that's eight years. And so this would be around time that there's some sort of decision around whether you are going to make partner or if there's some sort of promotion. So... I mean, typically the titles don't really reflect that. It's not like marketing or technology where it's like, oh, now you are a senior product manager. Like he, he may just be like an eighth year associate. But I would ask him if there have been any title changes or any progression uh, since 2009. That's a question that I would ask him. Okay, and we're going to move this back to nice big font not like so crazy big but big enough also sometimes sometimes it's nice to whoop, sometimes it's nice to do a little bit of a left alignment but you got to really look at it and see if that is what you want nope <laughs> I think a center alignment is going to be better here. Get rid of that space. And, okay, you do one last check in terms of, all right, is everything consistent? Providence, Rhode Island, New York, New York, New York, New York. Watch, oh, see, an inconsistency. New York, New York there. That should be New York, New York to the present. There's some debate about whether present should be capped or not. I think, yes. LLP. Okay, so then here's another thing. So should there be a comma here? Um, best thing to do is just no comma, says my husband, the lawyer. Therefore, white in case LLP should not have a comma. And litigation associate, comma. Associate, some associate, comma. Office. Okay, comma, 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 fine, 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 summer, fall, 2005, J and D has a thing, okay. And that, That is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the very first live resume editing. Thanks so much for joining. <laughs> I really thought I could be like much wittier during this process, but it takes like so much brain power. I really could do nothing but like stare at my computer and type. So maybe in post-production, I'll add like emoticons or emojis or I don't know, music or something to like liven this up. <laughs> really was just me sitting at a computer doing some dude's legal resume for 30 minutes. <laughs> that was my Friday night, and I hope you enjoyed it. All right, peace out. Talk to you soon. Ugh.